now we're going to look at our tessellations and see what they might be. So when you, it's important to make as many as you can. Um, I tell my students, we try the three different techniques and I tell them they need to make 10 of each and then we'll take a look at them later. So this is the time when we take a look and we see what could it become. So there's what I consider the low level tessellations where it's like um, a profile of a face or a part of something. Um, our goal is to try and find something that could be translated into a whole object instead of just a part of something. So as I look at these, I put them against a dark background paper. So I've got this brown paper here and I can look at it and turn it around in different directions. And this might remind you of like looking at the clouds and seeing bunny rabbits or turtles or something like that in it. So you really wanna use your imagination as you look at the shapes from all different angles and think, well, what could it be? So when I look at this, um, I see some different kinds of cartoon-like characters uh, that maybe I could use. Maybe this sort of looks like a duck bill that's turned up. Maybe that's a part of a wing. Maybe these are feet, um, something along those lines. This one kind of intrigues me. I feel like I see a cloak, um, maybe something being held in the hand, maybe something like a wizard. Um, so I could play around with this idea of making this into a hat. Uh, maybe this is another sleeve with a hand coming out of it, so I can play around with the idea of a hand here. Um, I see this as some sort of a staff, maybe, and um, I wanna play with the idea of the hand coming around, so I'm gonna extend this around and make it look like he's gripping that. And we'll get the other fingers gripping around it. edge on there um, and then I'm gonna make this into a sleeve um, maybe I'll have some kind of a face maybe I'll do a you know some exaggerated troll kind of face coming out of here um, and I can maybe hide his feet down here I can have like a little shoe sort of appearing out of this corner here little separation in the cloak. Um, so I can play around with this idea a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna have like a little wizard thing. This one, as I look at it, it kind of makes me think of a flag um, or a flame, maybe a torch. So I could play around with um, this idea, like an Olympic torch and it could have some flames coming out of it. More flames. And then maybe this all could be smoke uh, coming out of the torch and I can play around with some decoration on it. And I'm gonna look at all of my shapes this way and try and figure out what it can be. Cause maybe I'll look at this and I can't see anything but I kind of do maybe this is the beak of a large angry chicken there's a foot there's a head a weird wing maybe this could be some kind of cat like figure head foot tail but I've got to play with it but I do like these two and then once you have the one that you'd like or the two that you'd like then you need to test it before you go on to making the actual tessellation because nothing's worse than starting out something and then finding out it won't work. So you don't wanna waste your time. So what you're gonna do is get a little piece of copy paper and you'll take the one that you think you wanna use. So um, well, let me go for the little wizard guy. So he's tall, so I'm gonna put my paper tall. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hold him down and trace the edges. And again, this is just to test, will it tessellate? Did you make a mistake? Is it gonna really work? Because um, if you get all involved in it and you find out it's not gonna work, you're just kind of wasting your time. Okay, go around and trace. Now I'm gonna take this and move it around and see where is it going to connect. 
So I've got in my main figure, my number one, and I want to make sure that I can repeat that guy all the way around and then I know it's going to work. So I don't even have to trace him all the way around, but I'm going to just so you understand what's going on. So I'm letting that go off the page. I'm really interested in the edges to make sure I can see if the figure will fit together like a puzzle piece. Okay, so that's two. Let's see, where could he fit in there? Oh, there it is. So I line that up. Now, I've, this line is already there, so I don't need to draw it. So I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to connect it down here and continue that line. I'm going to continue this line until it goes off of my copy paper. Now I've got that one. So that's number three. This one locks in like a puzzle piece. So again, trace it. number four. Here's this one and that does lock in. Okay, so this is a good sign. We know that this thing is probably going to tessellate because I've been able to get uh, four of them going around, but let's test all the way just to make sure I'm not going to mess up too bad. So that's four. That's number five. And then number six. There we go. page. Okay, so that's number six. And number seven is that last little bit. And yep, that'll work. So that's number seven. So we know this is good to go. All right. So always test your tessellations to make sure they're really going to work. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting your time.